thank you so much for coming up and joining us. I know you've been a student here and you also have done lectures here too. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's nice to be back. What would you say the big issues on campus were in your time? Well, it was late 80s. Yeah. So we had Rainbow Warrior and we had Nuclear Free. Um, we, that all happened at that time. Yeah. Um, from a legal perspective, we had the challenge to the, um, the Springbok tour. Mm. We had Dame Sylvia Cartwright's um, inquiry. So there was some quite interesting stuff going on in the 80s. As a student, do you feel like women has quite an active role to play in the leadership of those causes? I probably remember my women um, lecturers more than some of the, the men that taught me back then. Um, I don't remember it being disproportionate, but when I think about it, it was. There were less women than men, but, but, there, were, but there were some very strong women leading mm. some of the legal curriculum. How did you find moving from that into the legal profession? That's always quite a big transition yeah. for, for everybody, and I think we underestimate the level of transition that is required, and that's mm. something that as president of the Law Society I'm really aware of. Yeah and trying to work with our young lawyer groups and, and um, law students associations to try mm. and get a bit more connection right. early on. Um, but personally, I like nowadays, it was hard to find a job straight out of law school, but I was lucky enough to do that. How many women compared to men were in your office? Um, there was all of the lawyers, bar one other woman who was a year ahead mm -hmm. of me, um, were, were men. And so it was quite disproportionate. We would have been you know, five, ten percent of the lawyers there, and yeah. all of the partners were men. There was no senior woman there at all. How do you think things have changed, and how do you think that's affecting leadership? I think it's around about 1993 that we started to have at least 50 percent graduates being women from our law schools, yeah. and we've now well over 60 percent, and that's been consistent for quite a few years now. Um, but that still didn't show in practicing certificates or lawyers in the profession until last year was the first time we got to 50% women. Interesting. Yeah, so it took a long time. We were close, but 50% women, and now that's the majority of women in the profession, but we're still not in, we're still not the majority, we're not, still not equal in terms of leadership. Why do you think it's taking so long for women to be equal in leadership? Um, I think people thought it would just be a matter of time that once we got so that we had 50% plus coming out of law school, um, that a lot, of, a lot of the barriers appeared to have come down, um, that it would just be a matter of time. And what we've learnt over 20-something you know, years is that that just wasn't the case. Um, and so we are seeing an improvement, but what we know now, and we should have been acting sooner, mm. is that it's going to take really concerted action to change some of those things. People don't consciously think I want a man over a woman. What they'll often be thinking is, I'm just going to choose the same thing. I'm going to choose what's worked before. I'm going to stick with what's comfortable. Um, and that mm. often means the status quo. And of course, the status quo isn't equitable. By seeing more women in leadership roles, I think we achieve a few things. One is we know we've got science that tells us um, that having more diversity around a decision-making table, uh, you, you're going to get a, a better range of decisions. Mm. Um, you'll bring different perspectives, different thought processes, different experiences, different skills. Um, so having any form of diversity Will, will help you make better decisions. We know that means you're more productive, you're more profitable. So there's a good business case for yeah. diversity, gender diversity and other forms of diversity. The other thing about having women in leadership positions is that really that role modelling, the visible pathway for people, yeah. the giving of hope to people, yeah. showing people that there it is that this is something that mm -hmm. that they can, that is accessible for them. I think the work that we're doing at the Law Society now will make a difference. Yeah. It has to make a difference. Um, I, I do completely take on board that we needed to be doing it sooner than we have done. Um, we've been doing a lot of stuff for a while, but not enough. Um, but I, I think, yeah, I, I know actually that the work we're doing now will make a difference. And there's a really bright light shining on the legal profession at the moment. and. It's not a light that we're very comfortable with. 
but most people are taking it as an opportunity to actually really make the changes that we know we need to make to be a safe and respectful um, but truly inclusive profession. And so what's the Law Society's role in that? How are they holding firms to account? How are things being reported? So the Law Society has sort of two roles. Yeah. One is representative in that we we support collegial activities and, and um, support ongoing education and professional development. And yeah. so that's one area that we, we're working on. Um, the other area is, as you've sort of referred to, is our complaints and our regulatory side, yeah. whereby um, if somebody, if there has been bad behaviour or unsatisfactory conduct or misconduct, then the Law Society is the place where people come to in the first instance and they raise those concerns, we investigate them and then we'll take action on them. We're also undertaking quite a bit of culture change work and um, so that, because we actually think we'd like to quite prevent the behaviours that lead to complaints happening in the first place. So we're doing a lot of work in the culture and systems change um, space and helping law firms do that and law firms are doing a lot of those things themselves um, in terms of the complaints area. For example, we've set up an 0800 line, it's called our Law Care line, and anyone in a legal workplace can ring that number if they don't know what to do, they don't know whether behaviour is okay or not okay, they don't know who to talk to, they don't know what their options are. This is a number that they can ring, they can tell us their name or not, up to them, and these people are specially trained to help them understand what, what is available to them and help them make a decision about what to do or not to do. What's being done to make sure it's safer for interns and that there's just more protections in place? So from, I mean, in my view, interns are as safe as they've ever been um, in, in, our, in our law firms now. Um, and that's because, as I've said, this really bright light shining on our processes and on our firms in terms of how they are caring for these young people when they come just on loan, really, from the universities for a period of time. Law firms are still quite hierarchical. Yeah. And of course that, that partly beds in some of these issues. Yeah. So if you're sitting right down the bottom of the pyramid, it's hard and the problem is with somebody's behaviour at the top of that, that doesn't matter what procedures and policies you have in place, raising those issues is hard. Yeah. Um, and so law firms are, and the Law Society with them is looking at what we can do to sort of break down um, those hierarchies yeah. and, and open up those lines of communication between people, but also help help people understand what it means to be part of a profession, yeah. both as new entrants to the profession, but also ones that have been around for a long time. You know, We sign something every year that says we're a fit and proper person, that we're gonna conduct ourselves with the utmost integrity. Yeah. And uh, that means treating people that work with you with respect mm. and courtesy. We need to, as I say, recalibrate, create a new normal, do things differently. Um, and we need to do that not just because of the issues that have, have arisen in the last few months. We need to do that because the future of the law, um, if we want to survive, the future of the profession cannot look like it does now. Yeah. It needs to look different. It yeah. need, to retain young, talented, fabulous people, yeah. we need to do things differently. We need to have flexible work practices. We need to be more collaborative. Um, we need to have... Um, healthy workplaces, they need to be a place that someone comes to and feels valued and respected. Mm. Um, that, sh that should always be the case, but more so now, given the future that the legal profession is, is looking at. If we don't get this right, yeah. we won't be sustainable.